Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week received his Doctor of Dental Surgery degree from the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry. He was awarded the Edward L. Wilson Award and also received the Volunteer of the Year Award from the Samaritan Community Center in Northwest Arkansas. Currently practiced from Centerton, Arkansas, please welcome Dr. Trent McCord, DDS. How's it going, Dr. McCord? Hey, Sean. Doing well. How about yourself? Oh, man, I'm fantastic. Hit a little traffic on the way into work, but, man, I'm here, and it's a beautiful day here in sunny Southern California. But, um, dude, thanks, man. I'm just looking at you and your wife and your daughters. Man, what a great – that's an all-American family. <laughs> that's man, okay. it, it's right. I got my – are you – I don't know what picture you're working at. I have a third now. Oh, okay, so yeah. I think we, I have an older I, one with what? just the two of you <laughs> with your, wife, your two yeah, daughters. <laughs> I, that I probably should update our website. I Yes, I have a third daughter now, but she – yeah. That shows you how good I am at keeping up with our website stuff. <laughs> I am the same way. I got people that I get on there sometimes and go, guys, this is like, you got to update this stuff. And it's so, it's so many moving parts on that damn website. I've probably, in my 16, 17 oh, yeah. years, I've done it probably 14 times, you know, redone it. And it's just the way it is, I guess. But who knows? I, who knows it, even how much it all helps. I just, we do it and just hope, that, you know, some doctors or dentists can, I mean, can see us and, that's what it's all about, but it's just kind of a leap of faith in a way, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh yeah, man, I did. I tried getting everyone that worked for me to do a little bio, put their picture on about a year ago, and I haven't touched it since. And so we've got a bunch of new people and a bunch of people that aren't there anymore, all on our website. I'm like, I should probably change that, but you know what? Yeah. I'm. Not, let me just go pull it through. That's yeah. gonna be easier than messing with the website. You got to get the young, like I, my little David here, my producer, man, young kid, but. There's people out there that, you know, they can uh, they can do all that stuff for you, help you with your socials, you know, the different platforms. And, you know, especially for dentists, I, I see it, you know, with the public. They'll, you know, there are all those people out there are, are, you know, they could be patients. And where with me, it's like a needle in a haystack. I'm trying to get through all these millions of people to find a few hundred dentists. <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. they're hiding out, man. They don't want to be talked to or touched or anywhere and uh but with the public man mm -hmm. if, if i was a dentist dude because i've done you know i kind of do guerrilla marketing where we don't have a big big budget people think we're all big we're just a family run dental lab but uh i try to do that guerrilla marketing with the not a whole lot of money but try to get the best bang for the buck and it's important and especially mm -hmm. for a dentist too it's uh it's tough you know and they don't they don't get you know if you invest you know, ten thousand dollars a month, you'll get a fifty thousand dollars in services that you'll probably make twenty thousand off. Of. You know, just what you put in, you get out of when it comes to marketing, and that's why these big, big corporations they just pump it so much. You know, hey, I'm going to put a million dollars out, and I'm going to get. You know, you, you can almost track it if you do it properly. Um, how much you put in, how much you'll get out of mm -hmm. it. It's very small percentages, but. You know, that's like all those big, big corporations, they just go in such debt to fuel growth. You know, oh, yeah, we got to mm -hmm. – that's one thing I don't like. I mean, I'm, I've am i got a really good girl here that runs our books and our CFO, and uh, we try to be debt-free if we can, you know, and just on everything. And a lot of guys get real big by just blowing up with, you know, debt. And I just – I don't get that, but I think that's just big corporations. We're just little – we're little yeah. small businesses, but um, I try to think like a big business. So I'm, I'm kind of getting to a medium-sized mm -hmm. business, but it is, uh, you know, I, I always have the saying, you know, you can be miserable making a couple million a year or miserable making a hundred million a year. You might as well be miserable making a hundred, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> or no. Yep. Hey, man, might as well. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a obviously a, a dentist, a small small business and golly man <laughs> this running a business type stuff it's so far over my head i mean i'll call my, my dad's banker and i'm like dad what on earth how am i gonna he's like son 
<laughs> this is basic. Yeah. This is basic business 101. Yeah. You really should probably do this. I'm like, oh, no one ever told me that. Yeah, I, I just want to pull. I just want to go pull too. So yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. It's, I'm uh, sure you hear that all the time talking to Dennis. I mean, just. You I don't do. want to call us all morons, but we're probably not the most astute business owners as a whole. Well, I think there's a lot of different company, you know, different um, professions that it's kind of like they teach you, you know, the X's and the O's and all that, but they don't really teach you the business end of it. And that's just so important. And, you know, you, I, I do, I have a lot of dentists that still want to do all their books. They still want to, you know, stay late and, they, you know, write up their charts and it's all important and all good, but it's just something, um, I got other guys that, you know, will delegate it to different people. You know, you have three or four people in your staff and well, they got all their job duties and even to, to, to almost even outsource your, uh, your accounting. So it's proper and you're paying the right taxes and all that, or get a tax service that kind of does a lot of that, your payroll stuff. And, you know, I still haven't brought that all in house cause it's a big headache and I just, I'd rather pay the professionals to kind of do it for me just so I can sleep at night because I got enough stuff to worry uh, yeah. about, man. So it's just, when we try to get it to our dentist, it's like, uh, there's so many guys that just got great hand skills. They got such, you know, great theory in their mind. They know everything about it. But when it comes to running a business, they just, um, they lose it or managing people. And it's just, it's hard because I've got so many guys that, you know, got great hands and um, got a great practice, but they just don't have the business skills to keep it flowing and to keep it, you know, their staff on happy. And it's important, you know, like mm -hmm. any business, you know, you're only as good as your people. And if you don't have happy people and all working kind of as a cohesive unit, man, you only get so far. And it's just it's not going to be as easy as when you get a system in place, kind of like your, your big Razorback guy fan out there. And I'm a big football guy and I, I love the Razorbacks back mm -hmm. in the day with Lou Holtz and all that. But. You know, it's a cohesive unit. You got to come together as a team. You win as a team, you lose as a team. And I kind of run my my business like a football team in a way that it's just kind of, um, you know, you're always good as your last play. And, you know, um, you know, defense wins champions, the whole thing. You know, quarterbacks, running backs, you got your front office, you got oh, your yeah. coaches. It's the same thing as a business. And it's um, put the best people at their positions. And after you do it over and over and practice and practice, like all my offensive linemen, I got all my plaster guys and all my receivers are all my, you know, designers, my quarterbacks are my ceramics. I mean, it just – weird but it works and then you're kind of in playoff mode and if you can keep that staff together you know um for a certain amount of years and try to retain them pay them above and beyond to keep them engaged put the carrot over their head with some you know bonus programs on you know numbers and this and that you just you're kind of like a super bowl you're like those uh new england patriots after four or five years with you know brady at the helm your staff and your team i mean there's nothing that you can't do that is not going to be more successful than not you know um when you're uh -huh. working together with the same people but i got some dentists that oh i'm going through staff left and right and that's not a good thing um and it's hard you know to no. to finally get that staff but when you do get them educate the heck out of them and treat them like family and you'll come to work happier and you'll go home happier and you'll have people doing all those jobs that you probably shouldn't have been doing in the beginning, but most, you know, dentists like to do it all. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know the business stuff, and I'm realizing that. Yep. Um, and especially as we grow, we've been open three years. And so as we grow and things change, like those small little mistakes get big. Yeah. And so, you, you know, it's been some of them. It's like, golly. So yeah, the accounting, I outsource that. We got a payroll software company that's mm -hmm. just a piece of cake to use. And I mean, I'd rather, I'm perfectly happy paying someone else to do that than me spend an hour and a half on exactly. payroll stuff and mess it up every week. So, no. cause I wouldn't mind if I had a way to mess it up. So <laughs> exactly. yeah, it is man having people do that. And, and you're right. Having the team, I mean, We've got, I think there's 14 of us at the office yeah, and you guys are rocking. Like, <laughs> we've got some rock stars and I just, I never worry. I mean, my, my assistants, I just, I don't worry about assistant type stuff at all. Beautiful. And so same with my hygienist, you know, and we've, we've recently brought some new people on at the front and that's, 
that's finally going better. But in the past, you know, you have people you're like, man, this just isn't, this isn't working out. Yeah. And exactly. for me, I sit on the couch and stew about it and, and don't do anything about it until it gets to, you know, a critical point. Cause I'm yeah. you know, conflict ain't my thing and, and stuff, but man, then you get someone in there kind of knows what's going on and everybody's happy. Oh, everybody's yeah. happier. When it's, mean, a, it's like kids, yeah. you know, with structure and rules and structure in a way they kind of want that they'll hem and haw a little bit, but same thing with staff and, uh, you know, it's just, um, we always had a saying here, it, um, lack of preparation on management part shouldn't constitute emergencies for your employees. I mean, you're supposed to uh-huh. have it to where, you know, they got everything dialed in and, you know, and, and they know what their jobs and their duties are. And it just kind of your biggest thing, like you just got to be the biggest cheer, the cheerleader. You're just pumping them. That's what I try to do every day. I come in and just, I'm just high five my people. It's like, let's get it going guys. What do we got coming in today? And it's just like, everyone's kind of yeah. pumped up, man. And that's just the way I'm wearing it's they're wired here. Like it. And I got no one that leaves me. <laughs> they all love it here. And yeah. I got people in the waiting to come in, but it's just, uh, totally blessed and i just i love it when dentists kind of get it down and and really just let their staff do what they need to do and they just are there mm-hmm. to come in the room and man let me cut it and i'm gonna say hi to the patient and let you go on to the next you know op or whatever yep. um and where i got some guys that are just they're gonna have their hands in everything and it's just some guys like that though but um and it's it's not really a money thing it's just kind of a control thing and i just i don't get that yeah. but i don't know i'm always been the one for, you got it if you're not growing you're dying and it's just i was taught from my old boss that you constantly got to keep growing man because you're going to be losing patients out the back door because of moving or maybe insurance goes to another you know um provider and so you're always going to be kind of losing patients um but you always got to be adding yep. new patients you know just constantly otherwise you just it'll never add up if you don't add any new patients and just have the existing ones i mean it's kind of like the saying you always have what you've always had if you always do what you've always done and it's like, uh-huh. dude, he got to yep. get those customers. But, oh, yeah. but you're rocking and rolling, man. Yep. We'll get to that in a couple seconds. So, hey, dude, I always start off talking a little bit about sports. And um, so, man, you're, uh, you're a Razorback fan. I know that. Arkansas Razorbacks, man. Tell me a little bit about your uh, roots with uh, the Razorbacks and uh, your love for them, if you could. Yeah. So I grew up in northwest Arkansas, a little town called Siloam Springs, about 30 minutes from where I am now. Okay. And so we don't – you know, everyone around here is a Razorback fan. We don't have any professional sports. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a big Kansas City fan, Chiefs and Royals. Okay, uh, but that's about the closest thing to us. And then there's Dallas. So, I mean, when you talk when you talk going to games or sporting events or anything, it's all the Razorbacks. That's our professional sport. No kidding. And and college sport down here, and it's Arkansas. I mean, what else what else do we have to do? We go, we go cheer <laughs> on the Razorbacks, and then you know, <laughs> and then go canoe or something. So, um, that that's home for us. So how are they yeah, doing? Always, how are they doing? I haven't, I haven't followed them much lately. How are they doing? Are they got a, they've been uh, up down. I haven't, I haven't seen them in the, in the big game for a while, but, uh, they, no. they looking up or <laughs> Foot, football's terrible. Um, <laughs> we, we, things have been rough as, ever since old Bobby Petrino wrecked yeah. his motorcycle with his girlfriend out the back. Oh, if yeah. you remember that several yeah. years ago, oh, we yeah. were, we were doing good up until that, and then and then the wheels have fallen off the bus. No so, kidding. but we 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 got a new coach last year, and we were absolutely horrible. <laughs> so we'll see how this year goes. We got to got to give them a chance to to rebuild. Um, baseball, we're 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 pretty good at baseball. Yeah, so okay. we've been to the College World Series the last two years, and and uh, just an awful foul ball away yeah. from. I don't know if you ever saw it. three guys standing around the hit, and then I, you know, I didn't sleep for two weeks. I was so upset about <laughs> exactly. that of last year, and then, and then this year we didn't do much in Omaha, but we made it. But, but we're definitely a baseball, baseball school, um, which I know isn't as big a deal, um, a lot of parts of the country. But we're pretty good at baseball. Basketball has been pretty rough. We got a new coach there too. So, no man, sure. I don't know. <laughs> I'll still pull for him. I'll always, I'll always be a fan. But outside of baseball, you, you, you. You're not particularly planning on winning championships all the time around here. Absolutely. Now, it's tough. I mean, even, too, with us, we're in a hotbed with colleges. You've got USC, UCLA, and all them, and they've been in the in the mm-hmm. tank last several years in football, and 
baseball's pretty big too, mm-hmm. but um, it's just kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, the competition level it is. You know, especially in the World Series. You know, um, it's just tough to get those college teams. You know, we used to always have a. Uh, Cal State Fullerton was always in the World Series, yep. and that's kind of left. And the dude went to Texas, and then uh, we haven't really had a lot to cheer about. You know, I think 2006 when we lost to Texas at USC, that was like the Reggie Bush area era back then. Mm-hmm. But um, big thing around here is the dang uh, Clippers and Lakers, man. All this stuff with the NBA, all these, <laughs> all the superstars are just like teaming up, man. It's like a whole different NBA oh, coming this year. <laughs> it's gonna it's be. the complete opposite of football. You talk about Brady and, and New England and like building a team and a yeah. dynasty. Yeah, the NBA is just. I mean, oh, each nuts. year it's like okay, these guys probably have a giant group text thread they're all in yeah and they're like man durant where, where are you gonna play this year yeah. well i know Kyrie. where are you gonna go exactly. what should we do let's mix it up let's pick three teams amongst us to to be contenders so oh, nba is just nuts it makes it fun and exciting but there's no there's no dynasty building going on i know um, i mean i say what you want about golden state but they they yeah. changed the I whole mean, game just, just with the threes and yeah. all that. But, you know, we've seen with Durant and uh, Clay Thompson going down, it changed the landscape of the whole NBA, and everyone started bouncing. Uh-huh. And uh, to get Anthony Davis with LeBron, and they got rid of the whole freaking team except for Kuzma. And then they got some pretty good got cousins and a couple others. But, damn, Jerry West over there with that Balmer dude, that Balmer that Microsoft guy that owns the Clippers, man. Everyone gave him uh-huh. crap when he bought it. It was worth like a little under a billion dollars, and he gave two billion. And everyone's saying, "You're so crazy yeah. to pay two billion dollars." But I think eight months later, his stock at Microsoft went up fifteen million billion or ten billion. Like, uh-huh. It's like free money almost. I bought a franchise. That, oh man! And now he's he doesn't care. It's like <laughs> what's the what's the biggest what's the best video game I could play? Exactly. Well, I'm just gonna freaking buy an NBA team. Exactly. And. You know, uh, we, we're not making money when we buy Madden. No. We're not making money when we buy, you know, NBA video games. And these guys, yeah. uh, you're, you're buying the real deal. The it's, real deal. Yeah, so, he is. And good he, for them. He's such a, what a great owner, that Balmer dude. He is such a nutcase in the stands. I mean, he's just pumped up. Uh-huh. and He just doesn't uh-huh. mind letting his skin, you know, show his true colors. And he's just for his players. And he gives them the best, you know. Yeah. Of everything, and he's actually going through a big thing with because both Lakers and them are at Staples, and they're always been the you know redheaded stepchild or whatever, and kind of uh-huh. second second yeah. you know second team there. But um, Clippers looked really good last year, really strong with a bunch of scrappy players, and uh, now they brought in freaking the Kawani. <laughs> yeah, they did with LeBron. With LeBron, with we haven't LeBron. been in the playoffs like seven years, and it was just nuts. But uh, but uh, with what you call mm-hmm. getting uh. The dude from OKC, and then uh, who was it? Kawhi Leonard, the Toronto Raptors. Uh, uh, Paul George. Paul yeah. George. Yeah. What a stud that guy yeah, I'm is. I'm a Thunder and... fan. Oh, yeah. I'm a Thunder fan, and it's just like, they, oh. And I, the, how do they do wait, that? Can you imagine? We had Westbrook, Durant, and Harden yeah. all those years ago, yep. and then couldn't couldn't get it done. Yeah, I and then it's just kind of been falling apart. So, but you know what? They're loading up on draft picks. And yeah, we'll they, got like, they got I'll like six this out there first round. Kevin Durant. <laughs> Kevin Durant. Is there a more disgraceful move in all of sports For what, than of Kevin Durant bailing on Oklahoma City? Had Golden State down three games to one, lost, and then turns around and just jumps on board a, a, Golden State. a championship team anyway as yeah. one of the top five players in the NBA. Yeah. What, Kevin Durant, I can't. I'm I'm a I'm an OKC guy, but Kevin Durant is a that, that, <laughs> yeah. what a what a wuss. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Tell Come me, on, man. Tell me Go how you me. really feel. No, that's so cool. Uh huh. <laughs> Golly. Uh, Golly. Kevin. I hear you. So. Now, and it's so now, I mean, and he's not playing this next year or Clay probably. So, I mean, the, mm-hmm. and Brooklyn, I mean, the New York Knicks, man, they, they're just hating life because, you know, they haven't won in 20 years. And that owner is just a ruthless little tyrant. And uh, he, uh, all these big players, you know, you got Durant and uh, Kyrie and they're not going to New York. Mm-hmm. They're going to Brooklyn Nets. And it's like that Russian, that Russian billionaires, like he don't care about the money. 
money either, and he's probably throwing them cash we don't even know about. But but now oh, yeah. that, that whole thing in Brooklyn, the whole thing there is the big buzz because Jay Z and Queen B or Beyonce, that's their team, and they're everyone's kind of all moving into the Brooklyn area. I mean, Brooklyn was like a like a horrible place 20 years ago. No one even thought of living there. Now they just all redid it and everything's being uh-huh. built up. And, and now that Jay Z and Beyonce are the New York nets or whatever, Brooklyn nets. So now uh-huh. all the, you know, all the younger millennial type players, they want to go there and it's kind of the hit place, yep. not, not old Madison square garden or whatever, or the New York Knicks, wherever they play, but it's just, I don't know. Everything's, Everything's yeah. so crazy in the NBA, but it gets you excited. I mean, I'm looking at ESPN every 10 minutes the last couple of weeks, like, well, okay, who's going where? And I'm not the oh, easiest basketball guy, but uh, kind of nuts. And It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm not either. I'm not a big – I like the Thunder. I went to Dillon School in Oklahoma City, so I followed them quite a bit. You know, I never followed the NBA before that, so that was a lot of fun. But now, I just, yeah, I get these ESPN – Things scrolling, it's like, what in the world is happening? Oh, it's all so, just changed. Big I'm, time. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Oklahoma City to deal Westbrook. Yeah, just, can you believe that they're, they're going to get rid of him? Next year. Yeah, they're going to get rid of him, and he doesn't matter if he can score 30 points a game, man. You've been matched up with some of the greats, and it ain't happening. But even too the dude that got uh, traded to the Clippers, um, he just signed a max contract last year for him to have that thing unwound, unwind that contract to allow him to go. They got like five first rounders from the Clippers. They got so much money and so much, I mean, well, so many picks and everything. They're going to do the same thing with which call to, they're going to just deplete the team and start fresh in the next few years, all these first rounders and, but who knows if that even works? So it, it's all crap shooting. Yeah. They got so much money from all the, you know, the contracts from TV and everything. It's like the dang yeah. NFL owners and the NBA owners, not so much Major League Baseball or hockey, but the basketball and football owners, man, that that, that is the the franchise to buy. If you could ever get, I always wanted to own a football team. They are team. doing all right. <laughs> yeah. let's, was let, let's, let's go in, let's go in and buy buy a team one day. You know, after after your lab yeah. and my office blows you know, up, we'll, we'll just we'll both be the biggest, and we got to both be probably be the biggest in the world to afford no. to buy a professional sports team, and then and then we'll just it's, yeah, it's crazy. We'll sit back and we'll never look at teeth again. Oh, I know. I'm ready, baby. Everything. Hey, I got a few more years. I'm oh, yeah. done with it now. <laughs> You're young, baby. You're just starting. But I got no. a lot more years. <laughs> You're kicking. Back I got down. a lot more years. Well, hey, Dr. McCord, yeah. let's go ahead and dental up. So tell me, why did you get into dentistry, and at what point did you think, I want to be a dentist? Man, I – so I originally went to college, and I thought I wanted to be a physician um, until I started shadowing some physicians. I, I don't know. We had a program at my school. You go shadow these, these guys, and, and, and all the doctors I shadowed were like, this sucks. And <laughs> In fact, I was at uh, – um, I went down to the Arkansas Children's Hospital because I, you know, to shadow a pediatric cardiologist. This is where I was in college. And I'm down there. I'm in the OR, and I've got a girlfriend at the time that, I mean, is now my wife. But, I mean, I'm in the OR watching the surgery, and, like, the anesthesiologist and all these people in there are like, what are you doing here? I was like, well, I'm just shadowing. I think I want to do this. And they're like, are you sure? <laughs> like, yeah. well, no, I mean, Aww. no. They're like, I wouldn't do it. Uh, you're, you're never going to see your wife. You're going to be in residence. You know, I was talking to this one poor guy. He was in his fellowship to be a pediatric cardiologist, something or other. And he was, he was like in year 12. Oh, I mean, he's just, he's just in scrubs and beat up. And, you know, he's like, I'm, I've been doing this for 12 years and, and I still got more to go. Oh, it, it, so it's just like everywhere I went, I think it was just the doctors I saw were like, don't do it. So then I'm like, well, screw that. I don't want to work that hard. Um, so I, I don't know how I, I started looking into dentistry because um, I still, I, you know, I thought I wanted to be a, a provider and like the sciences and all that. And, mm-hmm. then, and then I started shadowing some dentists and they're the ones I went and shadow are like, this is awesome. I haven't worked a Friday in 20 years. And, you know, I, I go golf whenever I want and blah, 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 blah. And I still get to take care of my patients and I make the decisions and everything. And so that, I mean, that's kind of it. I shadowed a handful of dentists, and the hand of dentists I happened to shadow, I, I followed the right ones because now I know there's tons of dentists that are just freaking miserable. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I was like, well, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so, 
so that's that's what I did. No I, I went to got into dental school and did that. Ellie, you have, must have had the smarts and everything else because dental school and medical school, man, those are the sharp guys. Those are the guys that really studied in school. And no, it's my hat's off to you guys and all the education you have to do and the commitment to be a dentist. And then it's kind of like a blind faith. You, unless you get into some guys at the beginning like you did that showed you a positive aspect of it. Some people go through all the schooling and they get in and they become an associate and they go, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> and you're stuck. And you're stuck. Yeah. Man. Oh, I'm going to go be a librarian yeah. now or whatever. <laughs> just, uh-huh. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They're, they're like if I could wipe the slate clean yeah. and get rid of all this student loan debt, I'd never be a dentist again okay. in my life. But, you know, that's not me. I actually, I really like it. I like the. I like being a dentist. I like the dental part of it. The business part of it sucks. I, yeah. I don't care for that at all. Oh, absolutely. But the the being a dentist, fortunately, I do, I do really enjoy, enjoy it. I mean, I've got, and we've, I know a guy from dental school that he got out and went to the Indian Health Services. Um, so we got a school paid for, and and he got done with that four year commitment, and I don't think he's. He's touched a handpiece since. Um, he's like, nope, I'm done. I did my time. I'm done. And and he now he's got a brewery, and so he's <laughs> he, he's loving. It. He's doing what he loves. He's oh, like, yes, true that. So I know, that's, yeah, that's but, a trip. I mean, it's just so true. And so many different levels with different doctors that get into it, and they're like, well. Um, yeah, but that's, I think that's with everyone going to college. I mean, I remember in high school, what are you going to be? What are you going to be? And I knew from like eighth grade, because my, old, my oldest brother, I'm the youngest of four boys, he was going to be a dentist because his teeth were all jacked up in, you know, high school, so he, orthodontist, so he had to go to all that stuff. So, but I always knew from eighth grade, man, I'm going to be a dental technician because my brother Kevin's going to be a dentist. <laughs> so it was like, I kind of knew yeah. it. And I, I wasn't real good in school, but um, I was good in sports and all that, but. That got me to my uh-huh. senior year in sports, and then you know when you're five foot nothing, a hundred nothing, you ain't going to the next level, and not with that uh, D, yep. D for diploma, you know. <laughs> it's like, no. yeah. But uh, I right, so what else can I do? <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you know what the the being good at school part and being smart part that that's useful and you need that that's helpful for getting into school. But man, a lot of that yeah. has nothing to do with what kind of dentist you are oh, or exactly. what kind of doctor. I mean, you, you, every dentist will tell you they had classmates that were yep. brilliant yeah. and, and, and they would, you would never get near them yeah. oh, <laughs> to, you know, to work on you. So, I always say that I got yeah. guys that they are so smart and so much theory and, but they just, they really don't have the hand skills, you know? They just don't, they could turn, and that, those are ones yeah. that go on to lecture. All of those guys you see lecturing, oh, yeah. those are the ones that weren't the greatest dentists. And uh, so there's a few uh-huh. out there that are kind of good, but, you know, they just, they'd rather talk about it than, you know, be in the trenches doing it in yeah. and out every day. But, uh, but again, that's probably with a lot of lot of things in, uh, in different uh, professions. But so, dude, tell me, um, mm-hmm. did you start out as an associate? Did you purchase a practice? I mean, you're only like three or four years out, aren't you? How, how long you been out of the college? Uh, uh, let's see. I am five years. Wait, <laughs> that's so six that's years. Trip. I'm, I'm six years, I think. Yeah, because I graduated 2013. So, okay. yeah, man, I, I graduated and I was going to buy a practice in my hometown and so I graduated, got my, oh, my license and everything and, and bought a house, was going to buy this practice. And then, uh, turns out, I don't think maybe we didn't have things as, uh, agreed upon as we thought. So the doctor, you know, I think he kind of wanted to practice a little longer and okay. we just verbally agreed on stuff that, you know, turned out not really working out. So then I found myself an unemployed, um, <laughs> dentist with student loans coming up. And so I hopped on with uh, oh, uh, a regional corporate type place and worked there for for about a year. And okay. it was brutal because I didn't know how to be a dentist yet. And you're having to see a pretty full schedule and working with people. Some of them are okay and some of them are awful and you can't yeah. do anything about it. Yep. Um, but it was good for me. So, yeah, I did that for about a year and then, you know, thought I was going to join another office and, and and that didn't work out, and then ended up at a, a community health center at FQHC, just seeing kids and doing amalgams okay. and pulling teeth all day. Um, and so I always knew I wanted my own office, and I had a 
you know, a couple opportunities that didn't work out. So it's kind of like, well, you know, maybe, maybe I just need to do my own thing. Um, cause you know, I don't really want to share this, yeah. uh, at least at that point in time, it was going to be hard to get a partnership to work it out. And I wasn't finding a practice to purchase. So I knew I'm in Arkansas and I were, you know, Walmart world headquarters is yeah. like four miles from my office. Oh, so people kidding. are moving in here like crazy, but dentists aren't quite at the, coming in at the same pace. I yeah. mean, no one gets out of school. It's like, man, I'm, I can live anywhere in the world. I'm going to go, I'm going to go live in Centerton, Arkansas. <laughs> so, I mean, I was like, all right, so I'll just open my own dang office. And so found a good location in the Centerton at the time. There's I think 12,000 people and only one other dentist. No so, kidding. That's perfect, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I opened up shop and, you know, we've been busy with a ton of new patients and everything from day one, we've done some marketing stuff. We did mailers our first year. And after a year we quit doing them just cause they're kind of expensive. It's like, well, let's see how things go. And it's, just, it's, we're on the main road and we're busy. So we're seeing over a hundred new patients a month and, and it's allowed us to be allowed me as a pretty, you know, not a very savvy business person. Mm-hmm. We've done well. I mean, we've grown a lot and everything kind of in spite of ourselves just yeah. cause yeah, we got a really good location. We got a good team, and we're nice. So that's, that's, that's we, we, have, we have a lot of, of fun and treat people well. That's it. What about so. you get any of that Walmart family in there, man? They're like some of the richest people in the world. <laughs> you know, I, I think don't, like five of them. I, you know, I wonder. It's like where do those guys? Where do they all go? You know, they probably fly in on a jet and down <laughs> in Southern California somewhere. Here, or they've got they go to one of the older established offices and in the area we got some great you know there's some really good dentists around here but yeah, yeah i don't have a walmart <laughs> family person in there yet you yeah. know one day maybe on an accident one will break a tooth and i'll be the only one open on a friday evening that That's i can it. i can say i, I you know I, I fix that tooth <laughs> start that, hanging out fly- billionaire just have a bunch of people hand out flyers to all the walmart people mm-hmm. and outside go, yeah. hey trent mccord oh, yeah. the doctor trent mccord dds around the corner Look at him. Hollywood yeah. movie star looks. I mean, you'd be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I won't even have to worry about checking their insurance benefit. Yeah. I was We're... like, it's going to be cash and you don't even care. Exactly. Fee like for a service. Piece of and candy. 3000 a yeah. crown, man. Weird bargain, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool, dude. So tell me, uh, describe the layout of your practice a little bit and tell me about your employees, who you, yeah, how many ass- assistants and hygienists and uh, associates, or tell me a little bit about your practice if you could. Yeah, we've got eight operatories, um, yeah. and so we opened with four plumbed, okay. um, and that, you know, as we grew, we just, we added people and finished out operatories, and so, yeah, that was that was in 2016, and then now... I mean, we're, we're using all eight ops. So we've got four hygienists and then an associate myself. And we each work out of two rooms a piece. No kidding. Um, and then, yeah. And then, so we've got, I don't know, what do we have? Five, five assistants and then three at the front desk. So Dang. yeah, we're, we're, we're all, we're, we're all, all full, but we work three days a week. So we do eight to seven. We work long days and, and my sanity is important to me because I almost lost my mind opening this office. I got so stressed out with everything. So I refuse. Like, I don't want to work anymore. Um, but we do. We work our three long days a week. And so yesterday, what, what days? Off. What days? Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday? You know, <laughs> and it just depends. It, you know, it depends on the week. So in, when we opened, it's like, well, let's work Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and then Monday, Thursday, Friday. And we'll just alternate them so we can – Okay. provide availability but you know that ended up just being kind of a habit but then we alternate you know like last week fourth of july we worked monday tuesday and then i'm going to work wednesday thursday friday this week so okay. we got a week off but only took a day off of work no okay. um and so we we just kind of change it up and when we want to do a long weekend or got to see e-course or holidays or something we'll we'll stack those days together that's awesome. Um, and, and, and do something with it. Yeah, man, it's worked out. Oh, it's it's worked out pretty well. You're just so. starting, too, man. Most guys can't even wipe their bum at six years, you know. It's like, what? But uh, yeah. p- tell me a little bit about your CE. What are you guys doing? Are you doing stuff online? Are you going out to Spear or Coys or, or anyone like that? Or tell me a little bit about what you're doing for your CE and uh, any uh, any recommendations on something that you've liked? Man, let's see. We, this year, I mean, we do like, you know, some of your local meetings and, 
okay. you know, courses, odds and ends stuff around. But we, my associate and I, we went to uh, Spear, did well, their facially generated treatment plan workshop back in March. Um, and so we both went, went down there and did that. And it was awesome. Um, it, it was, it was really good. And I don't know, I think we're going to, we're going to join our study club up here and do some of the spear. Um, it, you know, it seems like a good group. I'm, oh, I'm realizing, yeah. you know, six years out, I'm, I'm really pretty good at fixing one tooth at a time. Mm -hmm. um, if it gets to be, you know, full mouth cosmetic stuff, I just, you know, I don't, I'm just not too interested in it. So I don't do a lot of, and I think a lot of that's just going to be for me, confidence yeah. and, uh, and doing it. I mean, I know, I know how to do it. You take the spear course and it's like, okay, this all makes sense. But a lot of it's geared on how do you talk to patients about it and, yeah, exactly. and have those conversations, which, you know, actually I'm pretty terrible about because I still <laughs> don't do it very much, but I learned a lot of really good stuff. No, I don't come, I don't come uh, time and uh, spears, it's like top level, top shelf, and uh, most dentists will, oh, I, I can't afford it. No, you can't afford it, and you need to do something like that, especially as you're young. Give yourself, when you're 10 years in, I mean, you're just going to be getting more and more experience as you're in the trenches, and if you can do a three in it, you can do a 12 unit. You can, it's just connecting the dots and just how to treatment plan a case, and, you know, great lab always help you out there with, you know, just send some study models in, let the lab guys tell you, you know. Boom, let's go this, oh, this, yeah. this, and then whatever your comb beam or your PA can show you that you're able to do. It's just, um, it's pretty neat, it's pretty rewarding, but it comes in time, but uh, you're on the right track, dude. And especially, too, I got guys 20, 30 yeah. years in that still, it's onesie, twosies, man. Uh, I'm not doing anything uh -huh. bigger than that. A lot of guys, they, they might do a three-unit bridge once or twice a year, and but it's bread and butter dentistry, but that's 90% of it out there is what the patients oh, yeah. actually it need. Pays the bills. It pays the bills. Yep. And in downtimes, you're not worrying because, you know, I have a practice. I'm limited to cosmetics and all my veneers are gone. All I mean, those veneer, I used to do a thousand veneers a week and back in the uh, early 2000, 2005 and all that. And then it kind of went out the and door. And 2007 <laughs> happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, well, what happened my big dogs, my whales, man, they're, they're no longer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but all the other guys, they, they kind of weathered it. And we weathered it too because, you know, we just – if we can just pay all the bills and everything else, it's just, uh, that's what's important Does Money will come. I never looked at money. Oh, I got to make money. Money will come. And it just takes time. I think if anybody in any field, if you do it long enough, you'll be successful at it. And you just got to do it with a positive attitude, surround yourself with great people and, um, good things will happen. It's just, it's just a matter of time. And, you know, uh, yeah. just got to keep, Doing the, doing, away. doing the right thing too, man. But uh, so what about any uh, CAD cam technology, you doing any scanners? You're thinking about that. What's some of the newest equipment you're looking at or thinking about or even have purchased recently? You know, at, at the moment, I'm not really looking at anything a ton, but we, we got a comb beam uh, after we were open about a year. Um, which has been a really cool tool. So we, we place implants. I've taken a lot of courses from Blue Sky Bio. Okay, um, good, good. Is, and, and they've, they've got, I mean, so I'm making my own surgical guides for the most part unless it's complicated. And then um, we use that and the, the comb beam and then Indo, man. Indo, having that comb beams really helped me be a lot better um, at Indo because, you know, oh, you man. see canals beforehand or, Oh, or I yeah. see beforehand, okay, this needs to go to my endodontist. So, um, you know, that, that, that helps out a lot. And then, of course, with, with treatment planning implants and stuff. And then um, we've got a scanner, a Trios. Oh, good for you. Uh, so that thing's, <laughs> yeah, man, that thing's That's like the awesome. best of the best, we, baby. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. You know, that, it, that thing is awesome. But we bought it, and then, you know, a couple months later, Invisalign came out. Yeah. Well, we're not going to take those games. Yeah, so, I know. That sucks. That was, that's that's, that's still, they're trying to work that out, but that there's a lot of pissed off people when Align went and did that, but they're such a huge company. Yeah. They, you know, they lost the they patent on it, but they don't care, but I don't know. It's, <laughs> But they that trios, man, you could be scanning. You should scan all those preps, dude. Send them off to the lab and uh, forget the goo anymore, man. It's just so freaking accurate and so instant. So it's just, 
You need to send. Oh, yeah. You need to send me some of those uh, digital designs. I'll do them. I'll do some free for you just to show you what it's all about, man. We'll have them back to you in about a day. Yeah, man. You know, shoot out one of those, and I'll have it. And with trios, we get it instantly. So, boom, we're already mm-hmm. designing. It's off to the mill, and the next day, it's 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 glazed and ground in and mailed, and it's just amazing. It's just so so neat. And all the, you know, like Tarot's good. They're all pretty good. But the three sheep trios, I have the CEO of that company coming to my lab. And he, he literally sits in here for eight hours and works with our people. He's just a down to earth guy, man. I freaking love him. But uh, it's kind of cool. But so, dude, um, let's wrap this up with a little bit of advice from my young gun here, you know, being out since mm-hmm. the little have you have. And you just got a kick ass practice. It really is. And, um, it's just, it's amazing. But what kind of advice can you give some of the, the newer dentists starting off, some of the do's and don'ts? And because um, you kind of went balls to the walls. But it was kind of, I think it was really good that you got on the trenches with some of those, you know, the, the management, practice management type, you know, uh, dental practices or whatever you were in. I bet you saw a lot of patients and you saw a lot of things you don't want to do and maybe would want to do. Tell me a little bit of advice you can give some of our people out there. Man, okay, so I would say if you if you want to open your own office, I think it's a very viable option. It's been really good uh, for me, um, but go where you're needed. So don't open an office in Southern California. Yeah, exactly. Um, or, or, you know, some people can pull that off, but if you're just, you know, if you're kind of like me, and you don't, you don't know what in the world you're doing with a business, and you don't want to sit there and crunch numbers and yep. all that stuff all the time, Find somewhere where there's not a lot of dentists and a whole bunch of people. Exactly. Um, and so that that was that was pretty helpful to me. I'll tell you, probably one of the best things for me too was uh, is Dental Town. Okay, um, cool. And so I know I, I know you you know about Dental Town. So yep. I I got out of school and like for example, I kept breaking off root tips. I didn't know how to pull teeth. I mean, I pulled a bunch in <laughs> dental school, but we never. I mean, not, they were, te- I mean, they just weren't hard ones. Um, and then, so I'm like, man, what in the world I did? And I come across some thread on dental town, of just <laughs> thousands and thousands of pictures of, of a guy pulling a tooth and like, <laughs> here's the x-ray, here's the picture, here's how I did it. Here's an x-ray, here's uh, a picture, here's, and so I spent like two weeks in between patients at my job reading that and then magically I quit breaking root tips and exactly. I can get teeth out a lot I bet, more. I bet you that was, and it was three. I bet you that was Dr. Tommy Murph's. Uh... <laughs> that was Tommy Murph, man. Oh, that dude's that was so Tommy cool. Murph. I've got his, I've got a book. He, he wrote, he's got a book that he wrote and it's like an actual color book, Yep. but I don't know how he put it together, but it's only one sided. So <laughs> the, the back of every page is blank <laughs> yeah. and he autographed it and, and got it to me. I'm like, this uh, is awesome. So yeah, man, it's, it's, it, no. I learned so much from that yeah. and, you know, like root canals, there's people, there's some really good threads on there on just yeah. like how to find an MB2, how to file. I mean, just a basic thing, like how to hand file. And I, I learned so much on there. So it, it, that, that was probably, that was probably the best thing I've ever done. No, Ken, Howard, Howard Franz going to love that, man, because that is so true. I mean, he has the motto, you'll never practice loan again. You can go on there and look up endo. You can look up implants, the threads and a real world dentist. And uh, that's kind of where yep. I got my start in 2002, yep. 2003, when I opened 2002, I got on that and, uh, I got noticed, and uh, man, that interweb, man, it can it can make or break you. I got my ass kicked a few times uh, with some few cases here and there, and I mean, you can't please everybody, and it's just it's a tough thing. But it's it really was the Facebook before Facebook, um, and for oh yeah, well, was, and even yeah, even still, I mean, we've got all these Facebook groups, and I'm in a lot of them, and they're 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 awesome, and and. And everything, but with Dental Town, I mean, I still I've got the app and I'm checking it all the time. Yeah, it, it's easier to search for something, and there's exactly. not as much. I don't know. There's some of these groups have just a ton of trash. Yeah, like you get on a on a Facebook page, and poor hygienists will like say something, and then you got 300 dentists just you're a hygienist, you don't know what's yeah. going on. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's and then, crazy. You, you know, and they, and then in reality, they knew exactly. You know, someone had a really good point. Um, but on, on Dental Town, I don't know, man. There's just a it's a good community and then you can get on there and search anything. So Yeah. You know, yeah. if I got a patient on a medication, I'm like, What in the world is that? You know, I'll just go get on that's my that's my search. 
as I go Google it, or I, I dental pound it and get an answer. So, and that, that was the best thing I ever did. I spent hours and hours and hours reading through threads on starting an office and doing all kinds of stuff on there. And, uh, I, I mean, it was all free. Yeah. You don't have money when you go. Exactly. You think you have money, but you don't. Yeah. So, no, yeah. that's, that's great advice right there. I never really had anyone say that. I mean, if you, you know, like even when Howard was on a podcast with me here, he talks about this one guy. It took him 20 years to put together this whole thing on implants on this book. And he goes, you can go read it in a week or, you know, it took 20 years of in the trenches and all these pictures and step by step what you need, what you can do and on and on. And it's just, and Mm -hmm. you you can go listen to it online or you can read it and in a week or whatever it takes you to read a book. Um, But it's just, it's amazing. I mean, especially way this Everything and I'll let's check a YouTube video and okay I can do a ground mm-hmm. prep or I can do this or let's do a sinus lift. Hey, go to you. It's a go to Dental Town because there's a gazillion videos. There's a a bunch of continuing oh, yeah. CE, but uh, nah, it's good advice. And coming from a young gun, man, my hat's off to you, dude. You really are rocking and rolling. Got a great attitude, and um, you know I just can't thank you enough for coming on the the podcast here this week and. Uh, Dude, Trent McCord. There, remember, yeah. remember Kent McCord? There was a Kent McCord. I think it was at a TV show called Emergency way back in the day, or I think it was a movie star. But you kind of look like him. <laughs> Any relation? Is that, I look is like that... <laughs> No, but it, he must be a good looking guy. I'll have to go. Kent McCord, man. Kent. I never had a. I, you know, I've just got girls. If I'd had a boy, I could have had a Kent. Could have named him Kent McCord. Kent McCord, man. That dude. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think that was his name. But uh, no, nah, dude, you, you're looking great. Uh, great story, and man, I just can't thank you enough for coming on the Dental Up Podcast. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on here. I, you know, I always tell people, or at least you know, in some of these groups, the younger dentists. Stuff. I mean, feel free to text or or email me. I mean, I can my I can give my email. Is that okay if I share my email? Or phone oh number yeah, we'll put uh, on the show notes. We'll put your like uh, website up and your email, whatever. That'd be neat because a lot of people do like to reach out, and we got a lot of uh, downloads on this. I can't believe our numbers. It's kind of crazy because this is just kind of uh, you know we're the sponsor. I'm the dental lab, but it's just kind of to get you know, the story out about Dennis, you know, it's just kind of what they're doing mm-hmm. in real life. Uh, no one's getting paid. It's all kind of a true story here. And it's just um, a lot of different stories and different dentists and how they do and start off. And, and it's just a, it's a very open group too. They're always willing to help and share, you know, to help out fellow, you know, um, peers in the, in the industry. And I just think it's a great thing. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I love it. I love when I see, a, you know, young young dentist starting off and um you know there's ups and downs and everything else but man you're down to three days a week already and you're doing uh you don't even have to mark it basically but i think what you said truly is so important with the area like you said here in southern california dude i got 400 dentists on you know up to one mile square mile and all fighting for these patients and la i mean we're orange county but we're about 40 minutes you know south of la and it's even worse there i mean there's just dentists every which way and it's just um it's tough oh yeah it's tough man but uh, i mean and where i am people might even hate me they don't even like me and (laughs) you know what they still have to come see me. Exactly. Um, so, <laughs> no, it, it, I mean, it, there's really, they don't have a choice now. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm a pretty nice guy, <laughs> and they do like me for the most part. But, you know, I'm not I'm not fighting for patients. Exactly. I, I mean, I'm just, we, we opened, and there we are. <laughs> and, okay, we're in Arkansas. Let's go get our denture today. So yeah. that's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's so cool, dude. Well, hey, Dr. McCord, God bless you and your family. And, man, thanks again for coming on. If there's anything I can ever do, please let me know. Man, we appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Up Podcast Show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Up Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. 
If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.